celebrating style, culture, and community at the Essence Street Style Black Party. We Tell chat with director well Philip Warmington about his latest project, Made in New York, you know, we a Jamaican story. We don't go out with bed as a real Jamaican man and your girl come home and cry and she just get raped. And go out with bed and lie down and sleep and tell her to go take a shower and try and make love to her. No, we don't go do that. We are going to make it look realistic. Inside the kitchen of Sony Hall, a celebrity chef, Patrick Simpson, prepares for a catered event for Whoopi Goldberg on this week's in the kitchen. And I am the person where all the celebrities in New York reach out to to come and cater their events. Jamaica's crime monster. Can it be tamed? Mark Shields will present at the 14th annual CIN lecture series. You're watching Come Chat With Me, a Caribbean lifestyle magazine. And I'm your host, Ziggy Bless. Yeah, you don't know, come chat with me. We're there in other hours, VIP style. You don't know, so it's the essence, street style, see? So when I hear me, let's keep it locked right now. Boom blast, come chat with me, Ziggy Bless, we're there. presence as black people in the fashion industry during Fashion Week. So we figured we would bring Fashion Week to Brooklyn. I decided to start this kind of makeup because I really, really, really wanted to celebrate women of color. I always see creative makeup on different races and I never really got to see women of color who look like me, my same bone structure, my same facial structure do anything this creative. And I just wanted to put us on a plateau, the same plateau that we put other stars on. I wanted all of us to know that we are stars, you know what I mean? Our company is Equal Risk. We have natural wood. Watches are thing is time pieces. So for example, this particular piece right here, it's a pocket watch, but it can also be worn as a necklace, uh, wrist wear, all Swiss movement. Uh, all unisex, uh, all warranted, and uh, our concept came from my, my wife has a uh, fashion background and we're both artists in different mediums and uh, we actually wanted to do something that was functional, wearable art. Hello, what's your name? My name is Dora Owusu. Dora, you're a model? Yes. Really, man, what brought you here today? Well, beautiful black people. Of course, in its essence. So of course you have to come and show out. Like I wanted to see beautiful black women. I wanted to see fashion style. Yeah. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to listen to Afro beats, which I ain't hear no Afro boots yet. Yeah, I'm right. still waiting for my Afro beats, and then I can right. jam to the food truck and go home. Um, I'm actually visiting from Barbados. Um, I just decided to come in for New York Fashion Week, and this was one of the events that I saw pop up on my radar, and I was like, I had to check it out. You wanna represent? Panama, Panama, Panama. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn, New York. A real thing, man. A real thing. Introduce yourself to the audience. Then. How you doing, storyboard professor? Some people know me as Professor King of Flex Dancing. We came a long way from B Cat, dancing in the neighborhood, Crown Heights, East New York, Best Style. Y'all know the deal. A real thing, man. A real thing. So, what brought you out today? Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm modeling an um, a unreleased um, John Coy Puma Boy. Nice little Puma fit, unreleased joint. I just saw um, headline Afro Punk with Erica Badu. Um, footage soon come out. Um, Jay Z 444 is out now. Jay Z Picasso Baby's out now. Check me acting in Beyonce if I was a boy. And we taking Flex into the world stage. Shout out to Brooke up, man. Well, actually, I own my own security company, um, New Ground Security. But our theme is we secure with style. Nice, I'm yeah. love that. 
So you tell me, say, your, your work has worked for you. This is our dress and style. This is our dress, yes. So Where you can never see them? me coming. You'll never see me coming. Essence is honoring me as one of the 25 most stylish women. And it's a huge honor, um, especially to be on a list with the likes of Rihanna and Khalees and Solange. Um, so it's a huge honor. I like to describe my music as Afropolitan. Afropolitan. Uh, it's a merge of high life, pop, R&B, and Afrobeats. Performing today at Essence is definitely a dream come true. To perform with my live band and share live music with people from different parts of the world here in New York. Um, it was an amazing 30 minutes of my life and I can't wait to actually be at the um, festival itself. I am one of the female designers of the new Nike LeBron 16 shoe. So we're here promoting the shoe and giving away free pair of shoes. We're the first African American female designers for Nike shoe for a shoe for women. So okay, that's all history. Man. And we sold out in less than five minutes. Hey, what up, y'all? I'm Trevor Jackson. Uh, Superfly just came out. Go get my album, Rough Drafts Part 1. Rough Drafts Part 2 is coming out. Got Jack Cure on there. Yeah. A lot of dope stuff. Nice, man. Real team, man. What bring you out today? Uh, I just wanted to come kick it. Essence is family. They've always been kind to me. And yeah. anything they're doing, I always want to come show love and support. So, yeah. Yeah, Essence, street style. You don't know the occasion that. Come chat with me. We're doing at the horse. I don't know, so the ladies, um, trust me, they're representing to them and I'll tell them like, hello, what's your name? I'm Gia. Gia? Yes, we're Curly Girl Collective. Nice, nice. What brought you out today, Gia? Beauty, essence, the experience, the love. My love, that I'm feeling the love. And what's your name? <laughs> Cherise. Cherise. Yeah, Cherise. And what brought you out, Cherise? Fashion. We're big supporters of Essence Street nice. and Essence Street Style. So we want to come and show our love and okay. support, and then see all the beautiful faces. True, man. I'm feeling the vibes and the energy. I'm loving it. too, trust me, Miss Jamaica. <laughs> yes. What's your name? Simone. Hi, Simone. Where are you here today? Simone? I'm here for the experience. I'm here for the people, the fashions, the beautiful faces, everything. Love the style. What's your name, brother? Legend already made. My legend already made. My brother, what brought you out today? Man, it's the Lord, man. I really? feel like we think the thoughts of God after him, and he just put me in the right place to get that big positive, right, positive exposure, man. It's the Lord. The Street Style Festival really is a combination of, you know, New York fashion. You know, New York is the epicenter of fashion, so yeah. to see all these beautiful black people yeah. representing their style, the full African diaspora, you know, black American, West Indian, African, all here in one place, showing their vibrancy and their colors and their style, yeah. doing their thing. It's one of our most coveted events. People love coming out representing their style, sure. you know, selling merchandise, buying merchandise, yeah. just supporting one another in a beautiful, positive experience for black people. For the love of money, fame, fortune, music, the sky is the limit. In this Hungry Man Flame production, made in New York. For the love of money, fame, fortune. The problem is a big stone. For the love of music, the sky is the limit. This movie is a very um, entertaining movie. It has everything to entertain a whole set of um, people instead of just have a love story. It has action, it has suspense, and it has drama, and it has everything in a one for entertain people. In my movie, um, especially in this movie called Made in New York, it has a lot of things to learn as far as making choices in life. You know what I say? As far as, you know, if you make certain choices in life, this can happen to you or that can happen to you. You know what I say? So when you come to watch our movies, you're not only going to be entertained um, from the story, you know, you're also going to learn something. My production name is called Hungry Man Film Production and it's called Hungry Man Film for a reason. You know what I say? You know, because yo, we're hungry, you know what I say? And I, I'm, not a, I'm not a person who is... You know, I'm not a hypocrite, you know, I'm not afraid to tell people where I'm coming from. I start out with one little camera and milk a light and them thing there and it name Hungry Man Film Production and yo, you know, you know, me know so when time 
people see what I do with the with little things what I have because people already come to me and say, Oh my god, um, you can't believe so you do that with that little camera that you have and with the resources where you have to make them move here. Oh, you do that, you know what I say? No, before this little thing you are even done, you know, you know. I want to say something to because I make a next movie, you know, it's called Illegal Activities, you know what I say? And me, 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 the movie here is it, it do Atlanta, right? And you can also see it on JamaicanMovies.com uh, online. But, you know, people always jump to say, well, yo, you know, when them see the finished product, you know, them always say, oh, look on it and yeah, this. You know, people need to think about the, 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 um, the struggles where we got to for even do this thing yeah because these people who are making movies if they make a movie and it have some jamaican part tonight you know them now nah, i a jamaican real jamaican figure talk tonight them i have some other people from some place and learn them if you talk like jamaican watch out for the movie coming out it's called it's made in new york and it's gonna be very very interesting and people already are talking about how interesting and anticipating to see this movie so it's gonna be a very interesting movie and you know me just ask people them for those just come and support it and after you support it you're, you're free to say anything you want to say the first money me get you know me i go jamaica and build up my film school you know and the picnic them now nah, come they come 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 learn and have to pay me them i go learn for free and how them i go make their money when time then don't learn learn what them i learn them i go make their movie and we are going to have a platform for them sell their movie you know me i say and whatever movie them want to make i feel them choice that you're gonna see some things where well, if your girl come home and she cries, say somebody just rape her. You know, we have to make the movie realistic. We not gonna go away bed as a real Jamaican man and your girl come home and cry, say she just get raped. And go away bed and lie down and sleep and tell her to go take a shower and try and make love to her. No, we not gonna do that. We are gonna make it look realistic, right? So we are gonna look for a little man, we try to rape her. And so we make the movie night, man, it's just entertainment purposes. You know what I say? It's not a documentary about Jamaicans living in, in, in America, it's a movie. You know about the struggles of Jamaicans, certain different different role where and choices where people make in their life. Big up to the manager, you know, Zambia. She is the overall manager for the movie, you know, and um big up our cast, you know me I say, and she loves our cast um dearly. And thank you to the cast of Made in New York for making my story um come to life and making it so real. See so the movie here. I have 15 screws in my hand right here so from doing a movie here. I take me jump over a place and true we don't know so much about what we're doing. Make sure you go do research before you know the things too. Because if I didn't know I would have put some something down there. One time I jump over the city and my face miss a brick. And if my face you lick that brick there, you wouldn't have talked to me. I wouldn't have talked to you right now. You understand what I say? So a whole heap of things we got to for make the movie here happen, for entertain people. I don't say oh, you know uh, phone of fault but may I say you know I will pass struggle we got you to make the movie happen I don't know just put camera together and we got videos on something you know me I say even though it's low budget and you know me I say we try to make it as professional as we can we can hire cast members and and some only other people for do it so you know we all participate to make it happen and we could we, we all become a team and we could become actors and we become you know it all become a learning process for all of us so all of us get a good experience as far as you working with the camera working with the shotgun mic working with editing and working with stuff like that so you know me i say we are broad and we horizon star and yo we ambitious and we not go stand up on the corner and sell no drugs i win no business where nobody want to say well if them not go down with from doing what we're doing for force if we go do some next sitting because we're not doing that and heard my heart for no say boy yo you know we have choices where we could have go stand up on the corner and sell drugs and we have choices on the corner and where we could have go um take up, go down and go rap people and we're not doing that and we don't go make we do that either because we have our own way of thinking and we don't follow people and we don't dead for hungry and we don't go bow out for rich we have a work hard and this is working very hard We chat with celebrity chef Patrick Simpson as he prepares a tasting for an upcoming private catered event for Whoopi Goldberg. In another kitchen. kitchen. One thing I love about when I cater for private events it's the level that you can go and the amount of different stuff that I can do. Like this event that I'm doing right now, it's for Whoopi Goldberg. And listen, it is so much fun. Me and my team, we're working together and we're putting it together. You know, it's always fun. It's always being creative inside a kitchen. That's the thing about catering private events. Private events give you so much room that you can do so much stuff. 
So all of these beautiful things that you're looking at are stuff that I do that is totally different from what I do on a regular night when it's a private dine-in and you got people coming in and you're sitting and you're ordering from the menu. This gives me so much room to do different stuff and try different things. The little nice things, this is what people love and enjoy. And me and my team, we love making it. You know, just as pretty as you see it, it's a little detail that goes into these things that is so much fun. And I find so much joy in doing it. And I love, I love doing this. I love what I do. You know, I always say, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. So for me being in the kitchen, creating this, me and my guys, we're going back and forth, and we're going plating, and we're doing presentation. It is so good, it is so good, it's so much fun. You know, I remember someone asked me where your passion for cooking came from, and I tell them, this comes out of, it, it comes out of poverty. It came out of poverty, and me you know, being around food and can cook so much different things, and can do so much different things. Private event is something that I love to do because private event, like I said, give you so much room of so many different things as to what you can do. So I definitely love doing this. I definitely love doing it. And as you can see, I put in all the little love, all the little final touch into creating these dish. And everyone that goes out is a masterpiece. You know, when the guests see it and they taste it, they love it and they enjoy it. And this is why I take so much fun in doing this. You know, cooking is a heart. It's a heart. It's a way of expressing yourself, expressing the kind of person that you are. A lot of time, people will look at my dish and they go, wow, I can tell what kind of person you are just based on your dish and based on your presentation and based on how the way things just look going on. And for me, it's fun doing it. All my career, this is the only career that I've had right show and I'm enjoying doing it and you guys with me your support I so greatly appreciate it because listen it's that it's a, it is the trying career because you come into it and you do with so many different things you work around so many different nationalities so many different race of people and you get to learn you get to acclimate so all these little dishes that I'm doing from you see the chicken from you see the fish all the pass orders, all the little nice things, the shrimp ceviche that I'm making, all of that is just so much fun and just being creative. Another thing about whenever you're inside the kitchen, sometimes it gets so busy and it gets so crazy in the kitchen. Even with the guys in the kitchen working together, sometimes you shout and you scream and you give me this, give me that, and you all of that. It's the energy of the kitchen. And this is what a lot of people don't get about the kitchen. Um, just like they have a whole saying that goes, if you can't take the eat, get out of the kitchen. Because the kitchen is not a nice place, especially with chefs. That's why people would be like, oh, chefs are so arrogant, they're so loud, they're so this. Because you also gotta remember, you're dealing with customer service. You're dealing with food going out the right way it's supposed to, 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 to be presented to the guests. You're dealing with presentation, you're dealing with taste, you're dealing with quality, you're dealing with customer feel like they're a star. Whenever they come and they take their time, they leave their house and they come to, to try your meal or to eat at your restaurant, you have to show appreciation. And the way how you show appreciation is by the food that you present to them. The food that you present to them, it's your way of telling them thanks to come to your restaurant and thanks to being inside of your business establishment. It's the same way. So if you serve food that is not up to par, that's you basically telling them it's a sign of disrespect because they come to uh, to to patronize your business, you know, to 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 try your food, and you didn't take pride in, in preparing the food and serve to them. So it shows that you don't appreciate them, so they're not going to come back. And one other thing that people don't understand: when you lose a customer to another restaurant, there's no guarantee that you're going to get them back. I've cooked for so many celebrities, so many stars. I've cooked for two presidents, I've cooked for over 400 top celebrities. When you talk about from Rick Ross, from 50 Cent, from Joe Thomas, from Angie Stone, uh, Mary J. Blige, uh, LL Cool J, you name it, and the list goes on and on. From, um, you have Jaru, you have Genuine, you have, oh, and the list goes on. I can't even, I can't even, I can't even 
that that's how much the list goes on. Because some of them I can't even remember. But if you go on my Instagram page, you go on my YouTube page, you go on my website, you see me with that. And it's all about cooking with pride and cooking with love, and with passion. That's what I'm about. You see, as chefs, some of us we cook creative. Some of us we just want to put out the food. Some of us we take pride in what we do. And I think that's the difference with me. Like now, this private event, Whoopi Goldberg, Kerry Washington, this is a high studded private event that I'm catering for. And I am the person where all the celebrities in New York reach out to to come and cater their events. So we take, I take pride in doing it, and I take pride in making these dish and making this presentation. You know, and they love it, and they love it, and they enjoy it. And before you know it, they tell somebody else, and then they tell somebody else, and they reach out to me and say, "Hey, let Chef Patrick cater your event because it's going to be so much fun, and you're going to definitely feel the love and feel the passion that is going to." So whatever you do, just keep pushing on, keep doing your thing, keep believing in yourself, and trust me, you're gonna come out successful. All right, keep watching and join waiting in at the kitchen to a different episode taste it there have been more than 1600 murders since 2017 in jamaica more than 600 people have been killed so far this year including seven who had returned to the island after living abroad. Mark Shields, former Deputy Commissioner of Police in Jamaica and former Detective Chief Superintendent of Scotland Yard, will present at the 14th Annual CIN Lecture Series on the topic, Jamaica's Crime Monster, Can It Be Tamed? One highlight of Mark Shields' career as Deputy Police Commissioner of Jamaica was the investigation into the murder of Bob Woolmer, the Pakistan cricket coach who was murdered at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in Kingston. With Mr. Shields' experience, he has earned the right to lead the discussion on crime and make possible suggestions for taming the monster at this year's CIN lecture on October 24th at the Schoenberg Center for Research in Black Culture. Stay connected with Come Chat With Me. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching Come Chat With Me. Tune in each and every Sunday right here on CIN. See you next week. Time to act and not pretend. The rage of the youth defend them. Time to act and not pretend The rights of the youth Defend them Hey mama and papa Take care of your child Don't let them roam the street like animals in the wild, yeah